A uh, statement regarding remote participation uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Laws 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the North Reading Community Planning Commission is being conducted by a remote participation. No in-person attendance. <coughs> Will be permitted but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order a reminder that persons who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may do so by visiting https colon slash slash us o2 web dot zoom dot us slash j slash nine eight five four three oh oh nine two six or by calling in one three oh one seven one five eight five nine two meeting code nine eight five four three oh oh nine two six He's waiting to be let in. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading all that and not letting him in. Okay. Totally. Okay. Multitasking. Great. Right, I think we are all in. Oh, almost. All right, we got the small wireless. No, we got the. Uh, <clears throat> I was actually, I was going to suggest. Um, I know that Attorney Man has another meeting at the same time, and I think if we are able to, if we can discuss the zoning first, um, and that way she can um, attend her other meeting. If that's okay. That would be wonderful. I'd greatly appreciate if the board could do that. And actually, of the zoning, and there's uh, one. Yes. Yep. <sighs> Zoom wouldn't open up. We kept going to some other thing. So yeah. Uh, well, glad we're here. We have you now. <laughs> Is it okay with you, Warren, if we go ahead and start with the Z, um the discussion of the uh, zoning articles, um, specifically the Concord Street one? Um, I know uh, Jill Mann is on and would like to speak with us and has provided some materials um, as an update to the Concord Street um, uh, warrant article. And also I did wanna mention, I happened, I was at the last select board meeting and it was about other matters, but they did mention that it, it would be very, very helpful to them if they could have a recommendation prior to town meeting, if the CPC is able to give one, I just wanted to bring that up. So- um, Recommendation for the Concord Street thing you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the uh, they already sent out the warrant article to the printers. So right. is it just for them? Yeah, it's just uh, for them. <clears throat> All right. So what did you so I'm I'm sorry, I was looking at my thing here. So I <laughs> trying to get everything lined up here. I just barely made it back in time here. So. Sure, sure, no problem. Um, so uh, you wanted to um um so you want to start with the warrant articles? Is that what you want to do? If that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. I mean, um we do have the public hearing for the small wireless facilities there, 745. Well, no, we got the- um, You got some time, Warren. Yeah, well, uh, okay, all right, okay, we can do I think that. We're, gonna, we're probably gonna lose Jill in a few minutes, so I wanted to give okay, her the fine. opportunity. That's fine, we'll, do, we'll go for it, so. <laughs> All right, um, Jill, did you wanna start? Sure, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, wonderful, uh, thank you. I apologize uh, for not being able to be on video, but I am on my phone. So Jill Mann here on behalf of Sergio Covielli, Coviello, excuse me, who is actually on the call um, this evening um, in connection with his request to rezone the properties known as 412 and 14 Concord Street. Um, you know, we had brought this up to the CPC before, but Sergio really wanted to be able to send around a map showing really what he's proposing to do, which was what was included in that letter to you. We also sent that letter to the Board of Selectmen, as well as all of the abutters, and show that plan. Um, you know, as you can see, Sergio's property, and I think, Mr. Hayden, this was something that you had been very concerned well, about. Uh, is are we going to... Excuse me, Jill. I don't have the map. Oh, yep. I have some letter. Oh, you from, didn't get it with the letter? The sh I didn't. I got Fred and Carolyn Shaw. Is that the letter you're talking about? No, it's the package. No. In, it's it should be in there. Um, it's um, excuse me, I'm navigating it to it now. Um, I looked at four and twelve Conquer Street. There's nothing there. No, it's actually that was that was separate. It's under the zoning article folder. Um, sorry, warrant articles. 
Um, if you go into that, there is um, okay on both Park Street and Carford Street articles. So um, it's under um, letter to BOS with attachment. Okay, I yeah. got it. And so if you, you can see where Sergio really wanted people to understand that his, his desire is not to alter the, the nature or the character of the um, street, you know, and, and for the abutters across the street. And he's going to retain the two buildings that are right on Concord Street, which you can see on that plan. And then the proposal would be to locate the, you know, commercial building, um, if you will, in line with the buildings that are used by Bobcat and you can see that on the plan and in fact when he had sent it out that Mr. Hayden is when we got that letter from the Shaw's they okay. had seen the plan and then Mr. Coviello's letter look he wants everybody to come out he's offered to have a site walk with everyone um, and I don't believe the Shaw's took him up on it because they know the area quite well but they did appreciate having received the plan um, and we just wanted to let the CPC know what we had been doing and, you know, kind of give you an outline of what you are going to see. If the project in the property is rezoned, then you will see a site plan that's reflective of what you see on that plan. And that's really what the purpose was of the, of the submittal and of this, you know, present conversation. So I don't know if the board... You know, if, if the board wants to take this under consideration tonight, if the board, would, what the commission members would like to walk the property, um, you know, and, and make a recommendation at a subsequent time, I'm just not sure. But, you know, Sergio is on the line to be able to answer questions as well as, you know, I would answer any questions the board may have. Um, and that's really it. Okay. Um... So I guess I asked the board what the pleasure is. I mean, do you want to do you want to take a position on this? Is this something that we might want to do? I mean, I mean, I have my own. If, if anybody would like to speak on this, anybody have any comments on it? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, uh, this is Dave. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm, I just, I, I think uh, I'm looking at this plan. You know, it, it seems very reasonable to me, and. Um, you know, I short and sweet. I just I'm in support of this plan. I think mm -hmm. it fits in with what we have going on in on uh, Concord Street. What we want to have going on in Concord Street. It's not heavy industrial. It's light, and uh, Mr. Coviello's reputation speaks for itself, stands for itself. So, because of those reasons, I I support it. <clears throat> okay, um, Jeremiah, do you want to make any comments on this? At this time, uh, sure, yeah, right. sure. Uh, so I've I've driven by there a, a few times, and and you know after the last bidding and trying to visualize and, and seeing this now, I I think it, it mitigates the kind of concerns that I had, and uh, I would have no uh, problem with it going forward. Okay, so it would have my it would have my support. Okay, well it, well it would have my support too. I, one of the things I didn't bring up the last time when we were talking about this, and I should. I should. I just want to let everybody, um, because you, except for Chris, Chris was there when we did all this. But many years ago, that was a head out when when this, the people across the street bought all, everybody that bought their house there, that lives there now. When they bought their house, that was heavy industrial, and we had again. I asked Danielle to quick see if you could figure out how many trucking companies we had. There. We had a bunch of them uh, way back then, and then the planning board. Uh, developed this new I.O. district. This was not a district that we had before. We developed this district and we applied it primarily to Concord Street, but also to the Berry Center to, in order to control what happened there. We wanted to not have trucking companies and we basically zoned them out. So uh, the uses that are there now are much nicer and cleaner than what would have been there if the planning board hadn't. So to say that the town never did anything that, or that we never did anything, is not true at all. We were very proactive in trying to make sure that the Concord Street developed in a good way and with, with, with clean businesses and things that weren't as intrusive or noisy as before. And so that was our that was our attempt and it worked out well. So um, um, so again I would say I would be in support of it as as well. Uh, on, on top of that, of course, we've we've lost a tremendous amount of um, 
of our commercial space to, to residential. And, 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 uh, and of course, we've got some mixed use where we put residential along with you know, other commercial. And, and we really, everybody benefits when the town gains a little commercial property because that's, that's, the tax, that's tax money that doesn't put any kids in school. So that's, there's a lot of good reasons. And, and if you look at the whole town, there are a few places that are as well suited to that kind of expansion. Um, and, in that, and, and the fact that they, um, as Jill showed us, is that that 20-foot uh, that, that, um, wide, that buffer zone, that Paper Street buffer zone, that uh, I think is a nice deep line of demarcation to, uh, between the two pieces of property. So, um, and so I think that, uh, I think that it's a, a reasonably well done plan and I think it's something we should, uh, we should look at. Chris, did you want to make a comment on any of that? Um, I, I just, uh, my uh, opinion really hasn't changed very yeah. much. I, I'm concerned about the encroachment and, and what's going to happen next. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's the next drop. And I agree. I'd like to get more um, commercial space back in right. town. We've lost a bunch on main street, but yeah, you know, as we go this way, it's, it's, you know, I you think can't, this is different though. I, I, I really uh, it's going to march. I, you can just march right down Concord street right now, you know, and, yeah. and then into park street. And, and that's what I'm concerned that. with. I don't see that happening. Um, the, the conditions and the situation here are kind of unique, I think. And, and so well, uh, I, understand your, I yeah. understand your trepidation and I, and I, and I don't want to, you know, you, you and I've had plenty of battles trying to protect residences, residential uh, locations from commercial locations, trying to do buffering and uh, all kinds of things. Right. So we've certainly done a lot of it, but I think this is a little different because of some natural buffering there. So, well, you know, and, and, you know, like I said prior, if, if the will of the people says that it's going to change, mm -hmm. that's fine. Uh, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, to use my, you know, my uh, office to stop them once, if this changes, right. that's, right. that's, that's the will of town meeting. It, sure. My, my vote of town meeting is not for this. That's, you know, at least at this okay. point, no. So, all right. Okay, good. Okay, Jill, is there anything else you wanted? Is that uh, kind of what you were wondering? That is, no, that is really it. I appreciate, you know, the comments of the board and, and um, you know, again, re reiterate our desire for your support and would appreciate the vote tonight so that we can go before the, um, <laughs> excuse me, Board of Selectmen. I think it's on the 24th. Okay, is this a vote that we want to take? Is, is you want us, the, the board, to vote to take a position? Is that, Danielle, is that what they want us to do? They had mentioned that it would be very helpful um, in their discussion. And I know they're doing their warrant article public hearings on May 24th. Um, and we'll, you know, the CPC members, of, who hopefully a quorum of CPC members will be attending that meeting. So um, right. it would be helpful um, to, to take the vote. If you're ready to take the vote, that's up to you. But I think that's something they are looking for. Do you have a, uh, we don't, we don't have Ryan tonight, right? We will, but no. later. Okay. Um, well, <clears throat> did you want to wait for him for this vote? I mean, that's up to you. I don't think it'll change the outcome, but if somebody wants to make a motion, we will, I'll entertain one. The motions are in there. Um, if you want, I can... If you'd like to make the motion, I mean, I can, I can read it out. I'll... Well, if you want to make a motion and then we can. Um, sure. I'll move it, Warren. Okay, okay thank I'll, you. I'll move it. It's not a problem. Nope. It's you a motion. It always depend on you, Chris. Well, I've been around long enough. It's, yes, you know, you it's, it, it's, it's a motion. It's not my vote. Yes, that's, I, I understand. I just I know you do. my appreciation. That's all. <laughs> thank you. <sighs> Go ahead. You got it, Danielle. Oh yes, I'm sorry. I thought you were. I thought you were I, doing. I, it. I apologize. I misunderstood. That's all right. Yeah, let me pull it out. Um, okay. um, Looks like it's just a general one, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, 
I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to um, recommend the Article 31 um, as printed in the warrant. That's the article to rezone 4, 12, and 14 Concord Street. So moved. Okay. Second. We okay, have a motion and a second. And all in favor, please say aye. 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 You need to do, uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say call. aye. You need to do a roll call. Okay. Uh, David. Aye. Okay, and Jeremiah. Aye. And Christopher. No. And myself is aye. So that's, uh, um, so that the motion passes. And you can pass well, I appreciate it very to, much. Okay. You can uh, pass that Thank you very the, much this evening. I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your evening. I know you have a very long, arduous agenda, so good luck. And, um, yeah. Look forward to seeing everybody potentially at the uh, Fluckman's meeting. Thank you. Take care, okay, Danielle. Bye-bye. Uh, bye. bye. Thanks, bye. Joe. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Okay. Any, any of the other uh, articles that we wanted to speak about? Yes. Um, Attorney Latham is here um, for 146 to 150 Park Street. I just should, um, just by way of introduction, I wanted to just mention, um, we had received some feedback in the draft warrant from town council, but we received it at long after our public hearing already took place. And in addition to that, the select board had expressed um, wanting to see some additional, um, you know, material added to the article. And those things involved, uh, you know, universal design for the units and um, also um, a local preference for both the affordable and the market rate units. And so working with attorney, Latham, we had prepared some amendments um, to be made with the motion, um, but when um, in the back and forth, it was pointed out to us by town council that generally zoning can't regulate the interiors of buildings and it can't regulate tenure. So we've made some adjustments to the language. Um, attorney Latham has prepared some additional language with um, is it a draft that actually I think it was about five o'clock got dropped into your um, your file here, so I'd be surprised if you had a chance to look at it, but he's here and can talk us through the changes and um, those were made here at the suggestion of council. So. Attorney Latham, would you like to talk us through the? If I may, thank you. Uh, could I share a screen here? Yes. Yeah, please do. Is that visible to you folks? It's coming up. Okay, it needs thank to be, you. Thank needs you. Needs to be larger, Brad. Can you oh, make it larger? I, I will try. I'm not very good at this. Let me give me a chance. <laughs> You'd probably get on the on the view. Oh, close. Going That's the wrong, wrong way. way. There you go. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> right. Nope. That? No, right there. Don't move. That's perfect. Oh, now right, we thanks. gotta scroll up. <laughs> all right. Looking, Thank you for your guidance. There we go. Right there. Right. right there. So as uh, Danielle said, we we you know we we met with uh, the board of selectmen. Uh, they seemed uh, reasonably receptive to what's being proposed. Uh, again, we're going to appear before them on the twenty fourth. Um, but they, they clearly wanted to have a local preference included uh, in the bylaw itself. We have no objection to that whatsoever. In fact, we've worked up even a, uh, a conceptual local preference plan, although it's not part of the zoning itself, just to share that. Uh, so l language was drafted, uh, reviewed by town council. And what is in front of you now is the end product uh, this morning, the town council approved uh, that would have to be a motion to amend the main motion at town meeting. Uh, but this is, it would basically say that as part of the special permit process, the applicant will submit a local preference plan to you uh, and will look for input from the select board. Uh, and it would provide for the market rate units the affordables, of course, have their own DHCD regulation and there'd be local preference on those, but a different standard. This would require that every 
market rate unit would have a local preference for residents of the town who meet the criteria of being over 55. So I would also include former residents and employees, as well as parents, children, and siblings of residents of the town. Uh, so there'd be a requirement of advance notice. The details, of course, would be what you would impose as part of the special permit process. Uh, so this just imposes an obligation for an applicant to go through that, to give the town citizens a chance, the first chance at the units themselves. Uh, so that is the item uh, that would be substituted in paragraph K of section 200-169. What was there before was the requirement for an elevator and there was discussion of universal, but those are interior uh, aspects of a building that can't be regular than zoning. So town council is right to tell us to take those out and because it therefore left the spot, we put the local preference in that section. So there'd be a motion made uh, hopefully a friendly motion to amend the main motion after you made it and it seconded to add that. There was one additional item, a second motion. And if you recall, there was a provision in the, uh, in the proposed zoning that enables you to waive the requirement of the configuration or location of driveways and intersecting streets. Uh, I think good advice from town council was there should be some standard there. So added to the end of that existing language would be that you may waive those requirements uh, if you find that the location of the site driveway will not create an unsafe condition. So the words upon finding a local the location of the site driver will not create an unsafe condition is added to have some criteria for such a waiver if you're inclined to give it. Those are the two changes that again need to be changed or handled by uh, a secondary motion to amend the, the main motion. Uh, and uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, from the last time we appeared before you, a lot of work went into this, but this is where it's ended up. And our hope is that you find these to be acceptable and constructive. Uh, and uh, we can work out some arrangement through you and through the moderator to have those ancillary motions made immediately after the main motion. So the whole topic uh, of the zoning with the amendment can be discussed as one. That's really all we have to say, thank you. So okay. Warren, I have a question before ahead, Chris. Brad takes this down. So Brad, this second amendment E, um, that, so we, if, if we find that the driveway is safe and adequate, then we can give a waiver so that it can be like, say on the, on the lot line or whatever, um, which where it doesn't conform in the standard of the zoning standard, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, all right. Just want to make sure we know what we're talking about here. I was just a. Yep. Okay. That's that's fine with me. I I like that. Yeah. Well, okay. Are you going to take that down, you, Chris? You can take that down. Yeah. I can. Or Danielle. Oh. Um, you're right. Let me see. Or just ask Brad not to share anymore, right? Yeah. Is it good? Or I could do it. Whichever. Not yet. I'm sorry. Um, no, it's no, right. it's okay. Is it gone? Not yet. No. Not yet. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh no, All that's right. okay. Danielle will get it. She she um, she's the uh I'm <laughs> oh. You can't undo his screen. Um, right? I, I could do it before. What happened here? Let me see. I'll get it. I'll get it. Um, if oh, you can't, sharing. I'll it. log okay. out. Okay. Thank there you. we go. There we go. There we go. Well done. Too many Lathams on my screen, though. I don't know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. Um, do we have a, want to do a motion for this since we've got it on our uh, table? Sure. sure. I don't right. have it. Do you have it? Danielle? I can read it, sure. And I, I think, I mean, while I don't think it's absolutely necessary to do it, it seems like if everyone's in agreement, it would be a good idea. That way you don't have to discuss it too much at town meeting if you don't want to. Um, but let me find the motion. All right, let's see. 
Um, I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to support the motions um, for the amendment, the motions, the motion to Article 30, Senior Housing Overlay District, as, as discussed for amendments this evening. So moved. That sounds, I understand what it means. <laughs> as long as everybody else does too. Yeah. Well, I moved it. So. Okay. So we have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Seconded by Dave Rudlock. Okay. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, hey, can I go. mention one more informational item? I'm sorry. Uh, sure, Brad. We, we had discussed with the selectmen uh, adding uh, some features to the town common at the expense of uh, the applicant and would be maintained at the expense of the homeowners association. And that would be to have a walkway on the side of the, uh, of the town common uh, and maybe a couple of benches. Uh, just for people, the citizenry to be able to enjoy the commons, sit down, but locators who would not interfere with the sliding, uh, the sledding that takes place in that area. Um, so if you hear something about that, that was just offered in discussion with the selectmen. And of course, you'll see it and either <coughs> or disapprove it when it comes before you as a special permit. Right. There, there may be, uh, I believe there's some Indian land there, Brad, where you're not supposed to be digging. Oh, really? So, yes. Oh. So we should be just careful of it. I, I mean, I'm, I'm totally in support of that. But even where those trees are that are planted, those were they had to get permission, I believe, to plant a couple of them. Oh, that's there. interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll try to research that and find out about it. Thank you. Um, just so we don't run into any any issues. We have know about it up front. Sure. Good. That's okay. all we have. Thank you. Okay. I'll give us that with any. Are there any uh, other articles that they Warren, need? Warren, yes. you need to do a voice. I think you need to do a voice. Um, oh, okay. A, call, a roll call, I mean. Okay. Yeah, we, I keep forgetting we got a roll call of these votes. So now, yes, so, you do. So I will start with Jeremiah. Aye. And uh, David? Aye. And Christopher? Aye. And myself as I. So. Th thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Have, Have a good, good evening. evening. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Not to be a stickler, Warren, but if we don't have that, you know yeah. the. No, I'm. I thank you for reminding me. I I keep you know I'm keep I'm it's... thinking about the next thing and you know so. Oh, no, I understand. It's not normal. <laughs> Soon we might be normal. Yeah, yeah. How much longer? But... Like the first meeting in June. Yeah. Is everybody? Everybody's had all their shots. I have. Yeah. Yep. yeah me, me too yeah yeah so guess i guess we're okay <laughs> still yeah, waiting for whatever guidance because i know that when we advertise hearings we have to say that it's a virtual meeting and provide the call-in numbers and so we'll have to because we advertise like a month in advance so we just have to make sure we know so i'm just i'm waiting for some uh guidance on yeah we'll be doing. i don't think they 100 percent know yet but I, i'm sure it will yeah. be soon I mean, if people are concerned, we'll, 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 we'll uh, wear masks during our meeting. I mean, I've been to a thousand different houses since last March. Yeah. Knock on wood. I mm. wore my mask like I'm supposed to. Keep my hands clean as much as you can. And uh, don't touch your face. That's the big thing. Yeah. Just like that, Danielle. Yeah. Don't touch your face. Just like that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> your, your tear ducts are the most vulnerable part of your body. Yeah. Believe it or not. Okay, well, we have a, uh, a contingent uh, public hearing at 7.30. So it's being 7.35, we can move into that. Uh, for 110, 124 Main Street, Reading Lumber, special permit, floodplain permit, and special permit. Um, and do we, we uh, Bill Hall, are you are in, up for that? Or is that yes. yes, yep, that would be me. Okay. Please uh, just identify yourself for the recorder and you're on. Yep, uh, Bill Hall with Civil Design Consultants uh, representing the applicant for this. Uh, we were before you about a month ago. I'm just gonna share my screen here. Okay. So between uh, the last meeting and this meeting, we received a peer review from Design Consultants Inc. Uh, 
and we've revised the plan to address comments from them. Their, uh, the biggest comment they had was requesting drainage calculations. And in the process of doing the drainage calculations, because we're removing this large uh, gravel area back here and replacing it with grass to provide the flood storage, we were able to remove the roof drywall. That's really the only change that has been made to this plan. Uh, however, also between now and then, it's come to my attention that uh, site storage has been somewhat contentious in the past on this project, this property. So we'd like to discuss with the board uh, what we could do to make you comfortable with storage on the site. Um, in discussing with the applicant, because it's a lumber yard and they get different materials in, especially in the rear of the building all the time, there's daily those trucks coming in and out, dropping stuff off and they have to shuffle stuff around. Um, they believe it would be difficult to indicate exactly where on the plan they would be able to store things in the rear of the building, uh, simply because they're always shuffling everything around to make room for the next shipment of delivery. Um, but if there's something that we could do to please the board, the commission, then we'd be open to that. And that's the discussion that I'd like to have with you tonight. Well, I believe the outside storage of material is prohibited unless it's behind a fence. So do you have an area that you could fence in that and do all of your storage there so that um, I, I think that would meet the bylaw? So currently from what I've seen on the site, um, this is all parking in the front and then down off the site here, off the page here, I should say, still on the site, they have a fence running, I believe across the front of Main Street, if I recall correctly. Not sure if they have some storage back there. I do know that they have storage underneath this building overhang in the front. Uh, and I would think that they'd like to keep that. Uh, and I'm not sure how the board, what your opinion is on that. Most of that storage in the front of that overhang is items for sale. Correct. You know, um, so that's, that's, they should be able, they should be able to tell us what they're going to basically have under there because it's seasonal. So it changes. You've got right now, you're going to have bags of soil, uh, probably bags of, of uh, bark mulch, uh, maybe some Gotta compost. Fertilizer. Yeah. Fertil mm -hmm. Fertilizer for grass, things like that. So mm -hmm. they should be able to go out there and look and tell us, this is what we're going to store here. We're not going to store tires. We're not going to store propane tanks, you know, that kind of stuff. So if it ends up out there, then we've got something to, to, to hold it. If it's the seasonal stuff that is basically there, we can look at that to say, okay, that's okay to be stored there. I don't know. Is that, is that okay with you, Mr. Pierce? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think they, uh, but, but again, each season they would change. So I don't know. Right. So they, they could do one for each season. Well, it's not they, that difficult. Maybe, maybe something generic that says seasonal storage of seasonal uh, items and generically, and that would allow, uh, but I don't think that's the area. I don't think that's the area you're concerned about. Is it, Bill? I think you're more concerned about uh, closer, uh, further out back. Well, uh, yes, because the way the bylaw reads, it says any outdoor storage has to be um, fenced of some sort. And, there's a lot of storage that they have out back that isn't fenced per se but you can't see it from the street because you have this big long building in front. Um, so I'm not sure if there's something that we could put on the plan or, or in, a, in the decision or anything just so that this is something that's addressed. I mean, I think even if it's something that we could uh, have storage in the back and then the seasonal up front, but any storage along the sides wouldn't be allowed. I'm not sure if that's something the commission would uh, would like to do, but uh, we're open to suggestions. So is there, there's no gate that locks off the back at, at night? In I, other words? Um, I'm not sure, I'd have to check. There might be a gate in this area. I, I would hope there'd be some kind of fencing and gate. Otherwise there'd be people back there. You know, even if, I know there, I know they have some, some uh, contract uh, garages back there, um, yes. but they can have access because they give them a key um, and they can get in there. It's just, it, it, I would be surprised that there's not something that's impeding the flow of traffic, you know, and I don't think 
if you if you stand at the, the side of the building, especially once you put the new building in, if you're going to see right back into the into the store, into any area in the back. I'm, I don't know if I'm concerned with that that much, but, you know, during the day, you got to have the gate open, but it's not going to, you know, you can utilize the fence and, and keep it so you can't really see to the back. Yeah. Yep. Would that work, because Mr. Pierce? Yeah, yeah. Because of the nature of the business, I think it's a little difficult to identify, um, <clears throat> you know, what's what's being offered for sale, and on that, that's a display item. You know, and as you were talking about, Chris, the stuff under the overhang, and what's yeah. what's sitting on the ground waiting to be put away someplace else, which would be the storage issue we're talking about, I think. Right, and that should all be in behind, just be behind the building. Yeah, it's somewhere. all behind the building that I don't see the issue. Right. I don't either. Okay. Just keeping it neat. You know, it's it, you just, you just can't, you know, have a big mess and they shouldn't have a big mess because they got a mess. Then they're not going to want customers back there. And they do let customers mm -hmm. in the back to pick up materials. Right. It's, it would be unsafe for them also. So does that, does that help you at all, Bill? I mean, what you're looking yeah. at? Yeah. Yeah. That's very helpful. So I think I can, um, put some, some notes and some labels on this plan to address that. And uh, hopefully we can wrap everything up at the next meeting. Uh, sure. There's a couple outstanding comments from DCI that we'll be addressing, but those are all wetlands related. Um, so it should be all wrapped up after this meeting. Okay. So that's all you have for tonight? <clears throat> that's all I have, unless the uh, board would like to have any more input on it. Okay. Okay. Um... Any comments from the board or comments or questions from the board? Yeah, no, I'm pretty pretty happy with what they've done. Yeah, I think it's okay. <clears throat> yeah, there's more building inspector issues too. So now that those are all resolved and we, right. we, we know what we're doing, I think we're all set. So. Okay, then we're going to continue to another time certain. Do we have a continuation date, Daniel? Um, so we would continue to our next meeting is June 1st. Um, right now, there are no hearings with times scheduled. So we could do um, eight o'clock for this one. Okay. On June 2nd. Okay. And I, I did put a motion in. Did you want me to read the motion? Sure, please do. Um, I move that the CPC, oh, excuse me, I've lost it. <laughs> All right, I'm going back and forth here. I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to grant the requested continuance for the public hearing for 110 to 124 Main Street until Tuesday, June 1st, 2021 at 8 p.m. So moved. Okay. I second that. You a second? Okay, so we got to vote, take a vote, Jeremiah. Aye. Hi, uh, David. Hi. And Chris. Hi. And myself, I. So that, is, that motion is carried. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks, Bill. Have a nice Thanks, night. Thanks, Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, you got a little while before I next. You got 10 seconds before you can do your small wireless bylaw. 10, 10, 10 seconds. Five. You can do it now. Three. You okay. can do it now. <laughs> okay. That's what happens when you have another computer and I can see the clock ticking more. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't looking at that. I have, I have my iPad open with, my, with the agenda and everything on it. But I wasn't oh, yeah, it. you're on your regular computer, aren't you? Yeah, I'm on a laptop. Yeah. Um, but I got my the iPad open for the agenda and all that. Um, so I just want to make a couple of quick comments leading into this. Um, we, when I was, uh, when we went out to visit uh, my wife's family out in Indiana, um, where her daughter is, I go up and look at right out in front of the house and there's a pole with a, with a 5G there. So I'm looking at the poll to see what, you know, I, I'm looking for this great big box that we're talking about that's in our bylaw. It's not there. So I'm like, how in the world are they doing this? So I took a bunch of pictures 
which I meant to give to Danielle so she could send them out, but I haven't gotten a chance to do that yet. But they got a very small box on that. And they do have a sign that on the pole that says, that, you know, this high frequency wireless stuff here that might be dangerous it's on the pole. And um, there's, it's underground. There's a, there's a little bunker right on the, on the ground next to it, about three feet by two feet. And the kids can't open it up to see how deep it is, but it's Verizon and it's right there in the, and it's in a little bunker in the ground. And I asked about that before and was told that they couldn't do that. And yet that's exactly what they did. Everything's in that bunker, the wires run up and they got a 5G all through Greenwood, Indiana. So, so I'll share those pictures with you, Danielle, when I get, so I get a, a chance and you can take a look, but yeah. it's, it's, so neat, it's so neat and unobtrusive that I'm wondering why we're having so much trouble with this. Well, I think it's, um, it varies. I think some of them have a bigger box and some of them don't. There's one in my neighborhood that doesn't seem to have a box or not a very big one. Um, I, I do think they vary a little bit, but um, yeah. Well, I drove up and down the streets looking for them and they're all the, they all, they're all the same. They got these nice little in-ground bunkers. So there's no, no heavy weight on the pole. There's no, you know, whatever. And, and so that means that when I read through that bylaw that we got, I'm like, there's a whole bunch of crap about somebody coming out to uh, make sure the pole can carry the load and, you know, on and on and on. And I'm saying, why are we, why are we, uh, why, why are we doing that when, from what I've seen, that's not really a necessary thing, so. I think it depends on their, their setup. So if they wanted to do something that wasn't set up in that way, I think what town council is saying is these are kind of the standard, you know, yeah. things that people consider. I, I don't know if it's an option to require that all the boxes be underground. I mean, it'd be nice. I can ask if that's a, if that's an option. I just, I don't, I mean. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and, the, and the power, the, the power goes into the box in the ground and it's, you know, mm -hmm. it's uh, very unobtrusive. I mean, you can, you, 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 if you didn't know what you were looking at, you wouldn't even know it's there. Yeah, I mean, many of them are just these little toppers on top of yeah. wooden poles. Um, a lot of them around here look that way. It's true. Um, I, so I can, I, I can. I, I read through the, all that 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 whole bylaw, and it's there's a lot of stuff in there having to do with, you know, weight and all those things, size of the box, big these big monster boxes and boxes on the ground and stuff and. Mm -hmm. And I uh, and I know they make vaults for some of this stuff, and uh, so why 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 we didn't look at that as probably the best way to do it because it's out of the way, it's no problem, you know. I can ask if we can require them to exclusively be underground. I it didn't wasn't really presented to us as an option, but I can I can ask. Yeah, yeah. yeah there may be um, there may be times when you can't go on the ground because um, it is, you know, it is too wet, um, or there's another reason. Um, but I'm wondering if what you're seeing, Warren, is everybody's, you know, every antenna has its own little site and these larger areas that we're looking at are, are uh, a collective area that's then injecting power throughout, you know, maybe five or six poles. Follow what I'm well, saying? I mean, I mean, if that's what, I mean, <clears throat> I, I drove a lot around and looked and they, they don't have every single pole. They got the 5G on every so many poles i didn't i didn't count on many yeah so okay was only about 600 feet is some silly thing so so yeah does um, it go very far yes yeah, about 600 feet um but i i after being told that we couldn't do it and then seeing that that's exactly what they did um <laughs> i kind of had a question <laughs> yeah we don't do that I, alas i i don't I, I, I'll ask. I, I mean, most of the ones I've seen, I mean, some of them do have boxes. So I think the idea mm. was to have a regulation that would say if you have a box, it has to be under this size. Yeah. Yeah. I but can I, ask but if we can require them to be completely underground. No and, it, 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 yeah. We're not offering any. I mean, we can go, we can go ahead and do the small wireless facility zoning bylaw, you know, but I, but, but I have a feeling that it's, uh, that it's somewhat incomplete. Well, we kind of thought that already, didn't we, Warren? That it was going to be, you know, yeah, incomplete. Yeah. We don't have all the handles. I, on it. I don't think for how 
I wasn't prepared for how far incomplete it was. Yeah, they, the, 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 the 5G carriers are not sharing a lot of their information anymore yeah. with people because they think they're going to get stonewalled. Yeah. You know, we and we in this town, we never did that. We figured out a way to make this work for them and for the citizenry. Right, um, right. And and it's a shame that they didn't look at that and say, oh, hey, let's share with some information with what we can do and what would make it easier. So if they write a bylaw, they can make it work for them and us. But, you know, the those people who wrote who were involved in the original stuff, they're not around anymore. Right, right. You know, so okay, it's all the young you, kids. Um, what do you want to do? do you, um, well, first of all, this is a public hearing. So uh, Jenny, any other comments from the members of the board? So well, I, I did have a presentation. Oh. <laughs> which I'm not going to be able to share at town meeting now, I realize, because there's no visual. Um, it could be a handout. I don't know if we... Uh, if we want to do that, I can share with you what I have. It's just, I mean, it's nothing, it's really no new information. It's just what we've talked about, that this would be a site plan review specifically for small wireless and that the yep. CPC is authorized to have uh, design regulations and aesthetic regulations on file, which can be changed from time to time. So the day we discover it can be all underground, we make it all underground. I mean, that's basically the purpose of the bylaw. It's a very brief bylaw that refers to uh, changeable CPC okay, regulations. Well, you know, because we've all heard a lot of it, doesn't mean, I don't know if there's any public that would, is gonna want to comment on that. So perhaps you should give a quick presentation. I think, yeah, I'd be happy to, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, okay. And, right. Okay. Oh, look so, at that, you know how to do it. Do what? <laughs> Share your screen and, and put a presentation up with no with no headers and you know toolbars I, and stuff. Yeah, I just shared the PowerPoint. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. All right. Um so just as a quick overview, this is the definition of what counts as 5G and why it's different from our regular personal wireless service facilities. Um these are um wireless uh, communication facilities that have the, meet the following criteria. They're mounted, they're 50 feet in or less in height, including antenna. They're mounted on structures <coughs> no more than 10% uh, taller than adjacent structures, or they don't extend existing structures um, by 50 to up to 50 feet or by more than 10%, whichever is greater. Antennas have no more than three cubic feet in volume. All antenna equipment, um, is cumulatively, cumulatively uh, no more than 28 cubic feet in volume and does not result in human exposure to radiation frequency um, in excess of federal safety standards. Um, where might we expect uh, to see them? No applications um, or inquiries have been received yet uh, for North Reading locations, um, but we've been in conversation with Reading Municipal Light Department, um, which based on their conversations with carriers, they believe the eventual interest in North Reading will be on RMLD poles along Route 28. And that aligns with similar interest that's already been expressed in Reading. Can you all hear me? I think I'm freezing a little. No, you're fine. Okay. okay. Um, and in, in this case, um, so a future policy um, we expect eventually to be passed by the select board governing small wireless installations in public ways, um, and that would regulate review of public ways. Um, and we haven't actually heard of any interest at all on private property as a potential location, which would be the purpose of this zoning bylaw. Um, but that could happen in the future. We would just like to be prepared uh, with a policy and a procedure in place if there ever would be interest. Um, so just some examples of what they look like. Um, Warren, is this similar to what you saw in Indiana with a smallish um, box and a... Yeah, the one on the, the, one on the left, uh, mm -hmm. except the, it didn't have a big, the big box like that. Didn't, and... Oh, oh, it didn't have any box, really? Okay, okay. Nope, nope, nope it, right. it had the antennas and everything and everything and it had the little sign on the pole, but the wires came down and went, I see a fire hydrant behind that one, but mm -hmm. where the fire hydrant is, it'd be a, a, a you know, a plastic box. It was kind of plastic. Okay. And uh, that says Ryan Verizon on it. And and that was it. So the pole looked pretty much the same. It, the, you could barely tell that, that 5G was on it, except for the okay. side of the pole. Yeah. Other than this little uh, topper, it's hard to tell, but um, okay. All right. So these are examples from 
Actually, both of them are for Melrose, which doesn't have a bylaw. So, okay. Um, so just in terms of our yeah, just, uh, just so you, I just pulled this out of it, and this is what it says. It says, caution, beyond this point, radio frequency may exceed FCC rules for human exposure. Beyond this point? Yeah, that's what it, in other words, if you don't climb the pole, if you go higher. Oh, up, okay. Into, yeah. yeah. Higher in the side. But, but, but my, the only reason I'm doing this is because I don't remember seeing that in our bylaw. What, signage? Yeah, a sign that says don't climb this pole. <laughs> well, there's nothing in our bylaw now because it, it's, it, that would be in our, um, it would be in our policy, our aesthetics and design regulation policy that we would be, like the, the, the zoning bylaw itself doesn't really cover things like that, but okay. because it would, so all, there would be a section about signage and the sign, so it's, but I'll make a note to be sure that, that it addresses that. I thought that we had had, I thought we had had some regulations in that policy about signage. Um, yeah, so basically the picture I got, which I, you know, is, uh, it's just a pole uh -huh. with wires on it, you would expect to see on it, and just the antennas at the top, nothing else. Okay. Okay. Um, the wires run up the side of the pole to the, obviously, to the antennas. Right. Okay. If you get a chance to send me one or two of those, that would be great. I will um, review them with town council when it comes time to refining our, our, you know, our design guidelines, and we'll see if we can make them look the same way. Okay. Um, okay. So, just in terms of the approach, um, the town has been advised to develop a policy and procedure for two types of installations: those in the public rights of way, and those um, on and those on pr uh, private property. Um, the select board is expected to consider a policy that would regulate the installation of small wireless facilities as well as, well as other utilities in the rights of way. The zoning bylaw would apply to facilities on private properties, not in public rights of way. It refers to a policy to be passed by the CPC, which can be amended from time to time and includes aesthetic requirements and application procedures. The zoning bylaw is kept simple, but it refers to the policy so that each time requirements need to be amended, further town meeting action is not required. Um, concurrently with these efforts, a policy has been developed for consideration by the select board. This policy applies to small wireless facilities in public rights of way, um, and they would be regulated in a similar way as, as utilities. Um, and all regulations, including the aesthetic requirements and application procedures would be included um, in, in, in that single policy. Um, and that policy would also be able to be amended from time to time um, by the select board as needed. Um, so, our proposed zoning bylaw proposes um, a process for, for a simplified site plan review. It's definitely fewer steps and takes less time than our regular site plan review, and there's no special permit required. Um, you could require a special permit, but it really lengthens the time for review, and we don't have much time to review these. We have a very, very short shot clock to review all of these. Um, so section 200-46 of the zoning uh, requires a regular site plan review and special permit from the CPC for new towers, or if there's an expansion of an existing facility uh, that meets certain dimensional criteria. It doesn't require a CPC review when equipment is swapped, removed, or upgraded, or in co-locations, except where new equipment triggers those criteria. Um, when the CPC reviews an application under the personal wireless facilities bylaw, which also triggers another a site plan review, a traditional public hearing process is followed. This new bylaw would create a separate review procedure for small wireless facilities only. And this review would be simplified in order to meet the FCC regulations, which don't allow for the same level of review as personal wireless facilities, and which require the town to move on, move on a much tighter time frame. Towns must respond to applications for new poles or structures within 90 days and co-locations within 60 days. This is why a slightly expedited simplified site plan review process is proposed with a three-fifths voting threshold for approval and without the more extensive detailed review normally required for the new towers um, under uh, personal wireless uh, facilities. Um, without shortening and simplifying the process, the concern would just be that the town would not have sufficient time to respond to applicants and could allow applications to be constructively approved. And the main purpose um, of the proposed site plan review process is so that the CPC can ensure applications are consistent with, with the policy. Um, a public hearing would, would also be required to make abutters aware of the applications. Um, 
The zoning bylaw would give the CPC the authority to write and amend a policy from time to time that governs aesthetics, prioritizes locations, and sets application procedures, evaluation criteria, and fees in accordance with the applicable uh, FCC law. The CPC's policy exists in draft form already, um, and it would be ready to be reviewed and, and approved at a CPC meeting um, following the town meeting um, you know, passage of the article if it does pass. As um, small cell wireless installations are a new technology um, and it's an emerging area of law, we might find the policy needs to be adjusted and having the flexibility to allow these changes to be made by the CPC during a regular public hearing rather than waiting for town meeting is part of our approach with this combination of the zoning amendment and the accompanying policy. Um, we have been working with and will continue to work with RMLD to ensure the proposed regulations are compatible with, with their needs. Um, so a policy um, can reasonably regulate aesthetics like height, volume, color, and style and prioritize preferred locations. It can't materially inhibit small wireless uh, facilities or ban them from an entire zoning district. Aesthetics regulations can't be so restrictive as to amount to a, pro a material prohibition on facilities. The draft policy discusses uh, dimensional considerations and prioritizes locations such as in business and industrial districts over residential districts and places some limitations on installations in the historic district within the confines of the FCC regulations. It also provides guidelines for paint color and concealment, lighting, underground wiring where it's feasible, um, minimum separations from hydrants, trees and utilities, and prohibits facilities on decorative poles um, such as in the town center. So that is um, what I have. Um, I need to stop sharing my screen though. And how do I do that again? <laughs> Uh, well, no. <laughs> that little button that says share content, don't you just click it and clicks off? Yep. When you go. <laughs> Thank you. I just looked at it and it had this green arrow with an arrow going up. If you click yeah. on it, I'd share whatever I was going to share. So that's the one. Okay. I wasn't under pressure. That's why. <laughs> okay, so this is a public hearing, so I'm going to open it up to the public if anybody has any questions or comments <clears throat> on this, um, on this uh, wireless, this 5G wireless bylaw, zoning bylaw. Any comments or questions? Okay, hearing none. Um, where are we, uh, are we just gonna, are we, are we ready to send this off to the Board of Selectmen or we wanna make any, any more changes? What do we want? Well, it's already been, I mean, it was submitted to them, referred back to us. That's, you know, we hold the hearing. And then in terms yeah. of making a recommendation for a town meeting, if you would like to do that, we can. Um, this hearing is less than 21 days before town meeting. So the CPC is required to give a report. It can be an oral report. We normally do give an oral report anyway, but in this case, it's, it is actually a requirement or town meeting can't vote because we're close to town meeting. So um, if you want to, vote a recommendation now that's fine um well we, we should probably give a recommendation at this point because this isn't really you know this is something that we almost don't we almost don't really have a choice in in a way right you know, because mr. Gonna, mr pierce yes mr hayden if i may um the the way we had this in danielle helped us craft this uh bylaw allows us to it's basically referring back to us yeah. for our design standards Right. Which which we can change from more, time to time. As it right. Sounds. More easily change. So when and we just have to back it up with information. Right. Um, and we got information about what you came up with, which your 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 trip to uh, Indiana. Yes. Yes. Indiana. Yeah. You know, with that information you brought back with you, uh, we can then make sure it's workable and then make those design uh you know put those in our design guidelines yeah and it was that too so you know right your like first your first company. choice is going underground and mm -hmm. then your second choice by you know maybe a waiver or something from us is to go up in the air um so we need to we need to see how that you know 
plays out. But I think I think the zoning bylaw allows us to do that, which is fine. So I'm yep. in agreement with with you know moving this right along. Okay. Well, there may be there may be reasons why they didn't present that to us, but we'll find that out when we get our first application and work our way through it. Right. In the meantime, if there's no more no more input from the public at this time, I'm going to close the public hearing. And um, at this time, and then I'll ask for a motion for us to recommend to the town meeting. <clears throat> Do you have a motion in there? Um, yes. Would you like me okay. to read it? Okay. Um, I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to support the small wireless facilities zoning bylaw at the June 2021 meeting, town meeting and that the article be forwarded to the select board in, for inclusion. Oh, well, that's been done. So I will leave that out. Um, so I would say I've, I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to uh, support the small wireless facility zoning bylaw at the June 2021 town meeting um, and to recommend um, its passage uh, to town meeting. So moved. Okay, so I have a motion by Mr. Hayden. Second. Second by David Bredlock. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, aye from Jeremiah, aye from David, and aye from Chris, and aye from myself. Yes. Yes. Okay. 200 River Park Drive. Special permit request. So, uh, Mr. Dowdy, that would be you. Hi, uh, good evening. Yes, um, for the record, Taylor Dowdy with BFC Group uh, out of Andover, Massachusetts. I am here with other members of the Takeda uh, team. Um, uh, happy to um, share my screen if I may. Yes, please go ahead. Okay. So we're here about 200 River Park Drive, which houses uh, the Takeda facility. It's currently 92 and a half thousand square feet, give or take. And this project is, is a fairly simple and straightforward project and we're asking um, for your blessing on it. It's, uh, if I could go to the next PDF, it, it's a simple bump out on the back of the building another 3,500 square feet or so. Um, with the inclusion of an ADA ramp here to accommodate an ADA parking space, and an additional grass strip here to make up for the loss of green space that the new sidewalk here um, on the side is taking up. There are some um, stormwater uh, facilities that we are we're connecting the roof drains, I should say, into the existing stormwater system. There is a sewer line that's also being connected into the back. We are staying out of the 100 foot buffer zone in the rear, um, so no conservation um, approval is, is needed. Um, or conservation review is needed. Um, DCI, the, the uh, town of North Reading's uh, um, peer review consultant did review the project for stormwater, came up with a, um, some comments that we have adequately addressed based on the response I, I received from uh, Danielle. Um, there was one other comment um, that came from the uh, Commission on Disabilities. Is that right, Danielle? Yes. Um, they were asking about uh, connectivity to the front of the site. The site, right now there, there's no sidewalk connectivity to the front door, basically. Um, the idea behind that, I believe, is that you know this is not necessarily a public facility. There's not general members of the public that will come up here to say shop for um, the items that Takeda produces inside. Um, you know, we feel that there is equivalent access um, from the ADA spots and from the from the um, uh, regular parking spaces throughout the site, um, so you know I'm I'm open to to hearing discussion on on the sidewalk, but that's that's kind of our first thoughts and first pass at it. I'm happy to take any questions you guys might have. We also have members of the architectural team here. If you'd like to see some renderings uh, of what this would look like, I can show those as well. So um, happy to answer any questions. Mr. Pierce? Mr. Hayden. So I see you in the front, we have four existing handicap spots, correct? How, yep. do the, how, how would they enter the building here? 
the, the at via the front door right here. Which is, I'm sorry, where is that? Right there. Uh, okay. Yes, it's, it's somewhere right um, centered on the uh, the eighty. On those spots, okay. So they they're as close as you can get to the to the main entrance. Yes, that's correct. So, and you're adding one. Could you add two back in the in the back corner there? Two spots. Just, um, we could add two. We could strike this one as an ADA. Yeah, piece. the one right in the, right in the very corner. You've got one that's like a, a van parking, mm -hmm. right? So you can unload. Yep. Um, if you do that one in the corner, that 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 you know, it it adds another 50 percent to what you you know what you you're adding. Okay. Um, but I think the reason for that ramp back there is so people can make easy access to the manufacturing floor, and that's what this would do. Correct? Yes, that's correct. So you got office space basically in the front where there are four, where visitors, visitors would come. That's, that's right. Basically, and then you've got two in the back for manufacturing folks, and they could enter that way, or they could park in front and go the long way, so it's all the way from the front. Okay. All right, yeah. That, that's the sidewalk on the side, yeah. Yeah. There, there is a sidewalk running the length of the right. building. That, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's just, they're at two ends of the building. I mean, I think this is great that they added that back ADA area. Um, it, 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 you know, it's, I think it's supposed to be what, 250 feet from parking to the entrance of the building. But if you go to the high school, it's more than 250 feet from where the handicapped parking spaces are in the auditorium. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's more like, I don't know how far it is. It's, it's long way. So this, this is actually, really good they put it at both sides of the building i like that good okay um you know we've looked at this before so um let's see so i know we looked at this before then you took it out and brought it back so um i know there were some issues with parking but i guess you are addressed all the parking issues now Yes, we are. We're meeting uh, the zoning bylaw in terms of number of parking spaces. That's right. Yeah, I think that and even adding, even swapping this um, regular parking space with an ADA spot, you know, the numbers sure. are still the same. Oh, good. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Does the uh, rest of the board have any questions? Any comments? Okay. Looks pretty straightforward. Danielle, do you have anything on this? really don't. All of DCI's comments have been addressed. I didn't prepare a conditional approval just because we hadn't opened the hearing yet and I wasn't really sure if there would be any issue, um, but I can have one ready for the next meeting. There are no other... For the next meeting? So we're not waiting for any more information and uh, DCI signed off on it. We're good to go? That's right. Okay. Mr. Pierce? Mr. Hayden? I have, I have just one more general question. Yeah. What what size uh, trucks are going to be coming in and out of here? Uh, there are, this would be tractor trailer size, WB63 trucks, and we have uh, modeled those trucks. So they'll so, be able to back into those loading spaces? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Okay. All right, well, if there are no more questions or comments on this, then I will... Uh... Well, first, I guess I will open it up to the uh, this public hearing. We'll open it up to the public. If you want to uh, close your screen share, please, so that I can see if somebody else has a comment. If anybody has comments or questions on this particular application, uh, let me know. Um, hearing none, uh, I believe I will close the public hearing for this. And um, I guess we'll schedule for a vote at our next meeting, if that's okay, with Mr. Dowdy. Uh, yeah, that, I think that would be fine with our team. We are, we do, still do have a, a zoning board application pending. Well, you still gonna, you still gonna deal with conservation, right? We do not have to go to conservation. No. Oh, you don't. Okay. Right. You know, CBA. CBA. Okay. That's right. Okay. All right. Well, then we'll uh, we'll perhaps have a conditional draft, conditional approval available. For the next meeting, and then uh, you hopefully you will get a copy of it too. You can review it, make sure you're okay with it. You don't have any questions, okay. and um, uh, and we'll take care of it at the next meeting. Okay. And did I hear earlier the next uh, meeting is June first? Is that right? It is June first. Um, you. I'm sorry. Oh, nothing. Uh, so we have one public hearing scheduled at eight. Um, 
this one, what would we like to do? Um, be pretty brief. Um, should we say 745 because it'll be really just be quick. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We yeah. can do that. 7.45 on June 1st. Um, do you want me to read a motion from you? Um, okay. As long as there are no issues with the conditional approval, anything like that, then we'll uh, we be able to go right through it. Oh. Works for us. All right, good. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you very much. Thanks, Have sir. a good night. Yep. Thank you, too. Okay. Uh, hey, they yeah. listened the last time they were in, huh, Warren? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got a point across. I, I, I oh, like yeah. that when they, they listen to us. Yeah, yeah. So we got about 14 minutes here before our 8.30. So Habitat for Humanity discussion. Yes. So, uh, we, uh, we have uh, Kevin, I see uh, you're from Habitat for Humanity. Yes, and thank you. And, and what is it that you would like to speak to us about? Daniel? Would you like me just to introduce this? So um, Kevin and I have spoken a little bit um, about uh, Habitat um, is looking for a site in North Reading. And okay. um, we own quite a bit of uh, property and the affordable housing overlay district seems like um, it could be a really great opportunity because those are generally sites that are um, town owned um, to, you know, ready, for, you know, to be put out for, I guess, an RFP to, to be developed. Um, and they, um, they're all really intended for the sort of small scale development that Habitat generally does and really between, you know, one and eight units um, on each of these sites. And we, we spoke, um, I shared the, um, zoning map that shows all of the affordable housing overlay district properties and um, took a look at some of them, um, you know, discussed a little bit with um, with Kevin. Um, I, I understand they're looking for something between, you know, about three to five units. And so whether it would be a couple of consecutive properties or one of the larger sites, um, I, I did try to narrow it down a little bit for our discussion. Um, and I, I saw that some of the properties were a little bit more wet than other properties or, or some of them were, um, you know, just had seemed to be a little bit easier in terms of access or didn't require a roadway to be built out. Um, so I had a couple of recommend, recommendations for where we might focus our attention, but obviously if anyone else had any thoughts about it too. I thought the property on Haverhill Street, um, which is, um, in the Havel State with that one. It's That's the, one. the old RMLD site. Oh, was that an old RMLD site? I actually didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, the yeah, they used storage. To the trucks there. Oh, they used to store, uh, store okay. poles there. Yeah. Okay. So that's and it's wet. it is wet in the back, but... The front yeah. seems to have, you know, upland. I don't know how much. Right. Well, there's, a, there's a house on either side of it, so... Yeah. 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 I thought that might be a good one in terms of access, not needing to build a road. Out um, and also uh, the site, the two properties at 4446 Oakdale are really nice. That seems like a nice location. It's it's on the bigger side, and there are wetlands around, but not immediately at, at the street. There is actually is this the Oakland Oakdale extension? Yeah, so it is the extension. So it's the accepted portion, but it is paved. So I right. think that would be too big an obstacle to overcome. The other larger sites really required a road to be built, which, you right. know, would just be a big expense. And then there was the site on Old Andover Road, which surprised me. I thought it would be really promising. When I looked at it, there was a lot of wet, like ponds, right. you know, really the uplands I thought were in the back, but they're actually right up at Old Andover Road. So that looked really difficult. So I was going to maybe suggest starting to focus our attention on the Haverhill Street site and or the Oakdale Road site. So those were kind of a couple of um, things that came to mind. But I should, I've been talking for a long time and I would like to actually turn it over to Kevin. Okay, Ke um, okay. Kevin, have you, have, have you had a chance, Kevin, to look at any of these sites? Yeah, we've had one of our engineers look at uh, the possibilities and I can't tell you how excited we are at even the mere prospect of doing a, a project or projects in North Reading. The Haverhill site, yeah, absolutely. Um, we haven't done an assessment of Oakdale, but that looks really promising. It also said the Teresa Street, Street property, the one that's on uh, a dead end, looked really good. Uh, and the possibility of the uh, 5, 9, and 13 West Street uh, were possibilities as well. 
So, I mean, we're real excited. We're just completing a project in Bill Ricca, starting one in Concord, and we would just be thrilled if the next project could be in North Reading. Okay, what was uh, what would, what would you need to move forward with this? Basically, you know, do, just, I mean, do, do you need to write one? Do you need to pick one? I mean, I would imagine that you, an analysis of all the properties are the, the 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 best choices, and then the cost of developing, and then to pick one that would be the most the easiest and the, the most financially feasible one would be the one. Yeah, or you know. I don't want to be greedy, but we can we can do more than one as well. Okay. But yeah, I mean we'd be very excited. Um, I you know maybe working with Danielle, working with your um, commission to 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 pick one or two uh, properties, and then do whatever is necessary to to affect the transfer, and then we can start raising funds almost immediately for the build. Sure. So I know um, for the I know the Congregational Church here sends people to Habitat Humanity to help build these things. So um, yeah, we always get the community involved. We always make sure the houses um, fit the character of the communities that we were in. I mean, I, I defy anyone to go back buy a Habitat house and be able to point to it and say that's a Habitat house. They're always reflective of of the communities that we put them in, and <laughs> always uh, volunteer driven. Uh, with professionals, of course, supervising. Right. So, Danielle, you know, what would we, what do we need to do to say, uh, open up, say, maybe those two top choices to them? I'm sorry. What would we, what would we need to do to make those two top choices available? We'd have to go to town meeting with this, I would imagine. Yeah. So we would need to go to town meeting for um, the authority to allow uh, the select board to convey the property. And um, I think we would be required to do an RFP process, which I think would, you know, probably pretty straightforward. I think we could get some assistance with that. Um, and I think if we get our ducks in a row and try to, um, you know, if we, if we stay on top of things, it would be nice to target October town meeting um, for, for this if we're, you know, Habitat is ready to, to go ahead with it. Um, and I sure. think what we could even do is if they're interested in more than one site, we could we could ask for, you know, we could put three properties on the warrant and, or however many it might be. Um, you know, I had forgotten the St. Teresa's property is also a nice one too. It was a little bit of a thicket, so I couldn't really okay. get it there. But okay. Well, I have a couple that. questions about it, but I'm gonna open the rest of the board, let the rest of the board ask some questions. You guys got any questions on uh, this? I, I do have one. Go ahead. So, um, once the properties are built, I know that the folks that, that buy them, I actually worked on one in Lawrence, and you're right. You can't tell once you drive by that when they're finished, because I, I was kind of at the tail end of it. Um, it looked, it fit right in into the neighborhood, and the new owner of the property was there working the same day that I was there, which is wonderful. Getting some sweat and equity right in that building and helping out, that's, that's a great thing. They learn right away. Um, but are these going to count towards our affordable for for the town? That yeah, might be more Danielle. I don't know. That's what I was going to ask. <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we would aim to have these on our subsidized housing inventory. And Kevin, I don't know how closely you work with towns on that aspect of things, but I think it would be the town's goal to get that on our inventory and to have them be you know affordable in perpetuity. I mean, that would be our yeah. The, the houses we do. Um, have always met the affordable housing uh, guidelines. We put deed riders on the property so that they remain affordable. Um, we select families based on their ability to pay uh, and their need. We, we've done 40 houses. We're doing our 50th house now. We've never had a foreclosure. We hold the mortgages um, on all the properties. Uh, and uh, as you indicated, they, they're required to put in sweat equity, which is great for two reasons. One, they learn about house upkeep. And the second is after you've put in 225 to 450 hours of sweat equity, you're really <laughs> committed to that house being a success. Amen. Okay, good. Any question, Dave? No, I think it's great. Yeah, I had the same question you guys did just about that adding it to our inventory. Mm -hmm. That's great. 
And for, that, go for, ahead. For some towns, it, you know, I, I saw the earlier discussion about the community preference. We work with some towns that uh, desire and we build into the selection process uh, a community preference that they either live or work in the community. So that's certainly an option. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Yeah. I think I, we asked at town meetings. So I think that that's something that to the extent that we can do it, I think would be good. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a good addition. Anything, yeah, yeah. Jeremiah? What do you think? Uh, yeah, nothing, nothing for me. Uh, my wife and I have worked on these projects before in Lawrence as well, and I fully support the project. So. Absolutely. Thank you. Good. Yeah, the you having go. that having that affordability, you know, works towards our percentage. It's also going to help release that property. What are we doing right. with this property? We're going to do something really meaningful with it. Right. Um, it it helps helps you create a uh, a less expensive building because now you have the pride. That's the most one of the most expensive things today is is right. the actual land that you set the building on. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay, so I guess we're on board. Um, and I, I know, so, so the next step was what, for us to prepare an RFPs for the, for the, uh, and now let me ask you this question now, the, the, when, if we repair an RFP that goes out to anybody that wants to build an affordable? In other words, uh, is the, uh, is Habitat for Humanity competing against our, a 40B type developer? Well, I think what we do is we prepare an RFP that reflects what we want. And, you know, I think that if we identify after working, you know, with Habitat, if we identify that a particular property would be great for two houses, um, and we, I think that there are ways and to, to work with um, the RFP and the language of the RFP um, to, to reflect exactly what it is that we prefer to have. But yes, it, it would be an RFP. It wouldn't be just a direct sale. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I do think that it would could be prepared such that you know it would reflect what you know we desire to do. Yeah, with cost of building these days, an RFP might be um, um, might favor ha habitat for you. I mean, others are not likely, not as likely to get somebody bidding against them at this particular point. So um, yeah. Construction We're, costs have gone through the roof. Yeah, Kevin, what's your experience well, with this? What's our experience with this? Well, yeah, in other words, if we if we do the, if we go this RFP route, uh, is this a route you've gone down before? And yes, we have. Yes. Okay, and how does that does that work out? Are they able to write something that 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 has enough conditions in it that only Habitat for Humanity would pick it up? And yes. Yeah. What works? Okay. That's fine. Good. I'm good with that. Like yeah, me too. So. Me too. I've I've been trying. We've been trying to do this for how long, Danielle? Yeah, this is a good move. This is something we wanted to do. You're right, Chris. So. Yeah, and to be honest, I have had it on my list for a few years now to reach out and to try to make something happen. Our regional housing services office also thinks that um, for those affordable housing sites that we have in that overlay district, that Habitat is kind of the perfect match for those, and so I. I think that this really works very well. So I think what we'll do is if um, Kevin and I can stay in touch about um, the preferred you know, property or properties and what we are hoping the project to look like, we, we can try to shape this maybe over the next you know, few meetings. And I, I really would love to see something on the warrant if we're able to um, for town meeting. I don't think that we actually have to put out, actually, mm, no, we probably should put out the R RFP first before town meeting, I think. Uh, because, talk to yeah. Mike. Yeah, I will. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah I, I'm I sure I can. I, we can twist Mike's arm to get him on board yeah. without well, having to do it, it be, without doing any work. Yeah. All, right. <laughs> all right. Well, let's move forward on this. Um, we're all, I think we're all. Well, it sounds like we're all on board with this, Kevin. We're, we're very glad to see you. Um, and I think you're going to actually help us move forward something that we've had on our agenda for a while. It's all good. Terrific. Much appreciated. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Okay, it being 8.30, how's, how's that for timing, Chris? Right on the button. Perfect, perfect. Right. It's a request to withdraw without prejudice, so. <laughs> it's not a bad, it's not a hard one. Yeah, no, no. So I think uh, 215 main. Yeah. You have to open the public hearing, Warren. 
Okay, uh, well, I'm just, I was just reading them. Okay. Uh, okay, we're gonna open the public. Uh, oh, we, we haven't opened this. Okay, well, I'm just gonna open the public hearing and we don't need to read them notice or anything. Right, you don't. Okay. I mean, we could so, if you want. Uh, what, what brought this about? What can you tell us here? Um, just that the sale um, was not gonna be going ahead, um, that the applicant was gonna be seeking a, a different location. So when she does have uh, another location that uh, would be suitable, she'll be submitting another, uh, re we're resubmitting the application to us. So we'll have to re-advertise and everything depending on where the property is. I have the motion, by the way. I found them. <laughs> okay. Welcome, Ryan. We see you're, you're, you're with us now. Oh, hello. hello. <laughs> hey, Ryan. So I, I don't even have to read it. Look at that. Ryan's here. <laughs> you may not have it ready to go, though, Chris. Uh, right. I apologize. I do not have the motions. That's uh, all right. I'll I'll read it. I'm ready. You ready, Mr. Pierce? Oh, yes, please. Thank you, Mr. Hayden. I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to grant the applicant's request of May 6, 2021, to withdraw the site plan review for 215 Main Street without prejudice. Okay. Just so move. Okay, and uh, do I have a second? Seconded. Okay, seconded by Jeremiah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Aye. I'll, 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 I'll get a roll call here. Jeremiah? Aye. Okay, David? Aye. Christopher? Aye. And Ryan? Aye. Thank you. And I am I as well. So five in favor, no opposed. Let the record go. Okay, um, minor modification 303 Main Street. What are we well, changing now? I, I placed this on the agenda because I thought I would be getting a plan for it, but I didn't in time and actually it, I forgot to remove it. So <laughs> we'll probably okay. see it at our next meeting. Okay, we'll pass over that one. Yeah. So EDC vacancies and candidates. Yes, the EDC has three positions open um, for full voting members. Um, so I believe at the select board's meeting on May 24th, where um, we or most of us, or at least three of us, I hope, um, will be attending um, for the informational hearings on the warrant, um, they are hoping to do a joint appointment. So um, the candidates' resumes are in the share file folder. Um, just wanted to give everyone a chance to, you know, read through and, you know, so we'd have time to consider um, prior to um, May 24th, if you wanted to discuss any of them now. Okay. <clears throat> so that's the, that's it. So they'll, they'll, they'll consider it on the 24th. Right, right. Okay. Um, I didn't know um, at this point, I actually, I'm not sure if Anyone, Chris, do you know if either you or Vincenzo would have been were planning on reaching out to any of them to speak with them? I, I reached you... out to, I already reached out to a couple of them. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to find the, uh, where, where is that folder, Danielle? Oh, sorry. It's oh, I got it. No, got it. that's CPC applicants. Well, one of them was a CPC applicant, and that sorry, was uh, Matthew Dumont. So oh, good. I'm glad to see him. So moving. he is he's actually thrown his hat into the ring. We asked good. him to, as we had good. asked uh, Jeremiah also. Um, yeah. so uh I think he'll be a nice fit for that. Yep. Um and now I just gotta try to find the other folders. I cannot find the EDC folder, Daniel. Oh, I'm well, sorry. that's okay for for now. Um, uh, it's a, it's a, a woman who's uh, been um, had owned several businesses over the years, it, and it says it right in her little um, her little blurb. Resume. She's yes. she's very very intelligent, um, very. Um, she wants to be active in in the community, and mm -hmm. I think she can bring some. She started several businesses over her career. So she understands what it takes. So she's gonna, I think she'll be great fit for, for the EDC to, to help and understand a business owner and folks coming in to start a business Good. Um, or increase their business. So I, I can't remember her name, 
Um, um, and I apologize. No, I'm, just, I'm just navigating back to the EDC candidate folder. I can find yeah. It. I keep on. It kicked me out of share file. Sorry. Did it? Oh, you can put that into share file tomorrow and we'll all get a look at it. It's supposed to be in there. <laughs> just a matter of finding it. Oh, wait a minute. I got it now. I got it. If it'll open it up. Was it a standalone folder or was it? Uh, in a yeah, it's under it's under CPC meeting folders, Danielle. Okay. And it is it's an EDC, um, EDC candidate. Candidates. Yep. Okay. Uh, what was her name? Nancy Ludwig, Maria. Frick Maria, Maria. That's the that's the last woman I was describing. Okay. She grew up in North Reading, even, even, okay. even. Um, so I, she was very impressive. I did enjoy, I also spoke with Caitlin Sullivan, um, but I think right now her time is a bit um, sparse and I thought maybe she'd be good as an associate member. What was the other, what was the other member's name, the other person's name? Maria what? For Caro? For Caro, yeah. Okay. She's like the fourth one down in that. And then there's Lisa Egan. Now, I had always thought that if you were going to be a voting member, I thought you had to be a town resident, but everybody keeps saying to me that that's not how the, um, how no, the it's written. Is written. No, the mission is written. The mission is written. Um, I thought you could be on the, uh, an associate member if you weren't a town, uh, in a town um, in a living resident. Town. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not sure, but and Lisa is not, but she is also, she's, she's very, uh, she's been to a few of our meeting as a guest. She's very mm -hmm. helpful. I mean, she, she's in the uh, Better Business Bureau, right? Is that what it is in town? The Chamber. The, the Chamber, Chamber of Commerce, right. Chamber so she's, Commerce, yeah. she runs the Chamber of Commerce. She is the, the, their hired, their hired uh, person um, mm -hmm. that runs the Chamber. So she's basically a Danielle. <laughs> she's i i don't know how everybody feels about um resident versus non-resident you know despite what the charge says i i i, I will say at least has been showing up to all the meetings and she's been doing a lot of heavy lifting oh yeah no it, it, it's i i don't have i don't have a problem with her but oh yeah, yeah, yeah no just, i just wanted to mention we've had we've had other bad you know when you look at what we have a main street right now he got the he he knew about it and, and sold it before we rezoned it. As far as, you know, what I could see, because as soon as it was rezoned, or as soon as he sold the property, he was gone. He was off the EDC. So. All right. Um, okay, well, we'll review all those, and hopefully when, and then we'll show up on uh, some of the thought on the 24th, and we'll try to move it along. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, let's. We should do some minutes. Um, April 6, 2021. Ryan, do you have those? Yes, I do. Uh, <clears throat> I have them. Uh, there is no written motion for this, is there? <laughs> oh. I think there is, if you can find the... Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. It's, a, it's meetings. <clears throat> we'll Brian, do, we'll you, do can, the minutes you can take a meeting. There April you go. 6th, 2021. Second. Okay. Um, I have a motion and a second. Um, uh, all in favor, please say aye. Uh, Jeremiah? Aye. David? Aye. Christopher? Aye. And Ryan? Aye. And myself is aye. April 20. Move to approve the meeting minutes April 20th, 2021. Second. I have a motion. A second by Mr. Hayden. Uh, any any uh, changes or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Jeremiah? Aye. David? Aye. And Christopher? Aye. And Ryan? Aye. And myself, aye. See, Chris, I'm getting it slowly but surely. Yeah, you don't call for regular roll ball. Call right away, go right away to the 
to the yeah. roll call. Yeah, yeah. It I'm, works. I'm, I'm remembering now. Steve. You are. <laughs> new okay. Process. We can teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah. <laughs> now, wait a minute. <laughs> Not that old though, Ward. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean in years. I know. Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, uh, Danielle, do we have any uh, ZBA? We do have a few. Um, Actually, I don't have them up. Um, I, don't, I don't have my share file up. So. Oh, okay, there. I will um, open up the file here. Six Anglewood, nine mil, and 57 Marblehead. Thank you, Chris. Shall we start with 57 Marblehead? Um, I can screen share if people can't see them. I, I have it, but you can screen share. That's fine. Okay. Um, oh. These chickens, huh? Chickens. I'm sorry. You know what? My screen share. I have too many things open. It's just giving me a hard time. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Is this one chickens. It's the chicken one. Chickens. Oh yeah. I see chicken poop. All right. You know what? Let me try to let me try. Um. Oh, it looks like, I mean, it's an accessory building. It got plenty of room off this sideline. All right. Yeah. I, yeah. It's just the application. Yeah, they just didn't cite it on the on that layout. That's all. Um, where? The page five. Uh, oh, on this. Yeah, so they're just going straight back with it. Yeah. It's not going to be near any house. I don't see a problem with it, Warren. What do you think? No. That's the ZBA's thing. No roosters. No roosters, right? Okay. No roosters. Yeah, that, that's basically what we always say. Yeah, chickens chickens don't make a lot of noise, but roosters the crow any time of the day and night. Yeah, neighbors, it's just, it's neighbors and no roosters. That's, that, yep. that's what it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. okay. I have no problem with people raising chickens. All right, Nine Mill Street. Oh, Nine Mill Street. Okay, this is the water property. Um, it's back. It went to the ZBA, got relief. Um, I've been working with Mark Clark on this a bit. Uh, this is the property the town bought when we thought we need, when we were going MWRA. Um, yeah. They were not ready to go ahead to do an a on this property. Um, last year, it was tied up for whatever reason. The ZBA issued their approval, but it, it it's no longer good. It's expired now because the variance is only good for one year. So they're reapplying. Um, and I believe our recommendation last year was that there wasn't an issue. Um, they want to just cut off a piece of the property, reserve some for the town and sell the remaining uh, portion of the house right. lot, which has a house on right, it. Right, right. Remember that. Right. Well, it still may be uh, useful as a pumping station for sewer, so. Right, which I think is why they're reserving that, that piece. Yeah. But it requires it to be, you know, to have a non-conforming uh, frontage for both of the properties. Um, so that's why they need board of appeals. Right, exactly. Yeah, I hate to. Yeah, see they don't. They don't have enough area. area huh? See them approve a, a, you know, take a piece of property that has legal frontage and, and approve it with not legal frontage. It sets a bad precedent. It does. So, it does. Because when the next time somebody comes in and wants to do it, we tell them no, they're going to throw this in our face. So. We don't have to make a comment. I'm just, or if you want to make not. a comment, can. <laughs> I'm just telling you, you we, I, we've, been this, we've been down this road, Chris and I, and anyway, we've been down yep. this road so many times trying to prevent people from taking a lot and divide it up into six little pieces with insufficient frontage. To let them go. So. Yeah, that's one of those things that comes up in the NR handbook, right? Yep. Reasons reasons not to allow. Right, right. Yep. 
we pretty much held the line on not giving variances for frontage. So, yes. And the ZBA has been pretty good about keeping it for us. So I, well, I just, you know, so while I understand this is for the town and, and supposedly the good of the neighbor of the, of the town, you know, I, I do believe that a, that, a, that a municipality should follow the same rules that it makes its its um, its um, constituents follow. Do we want to look at what we said last year? I actually didn't think to put that in here. I don't know if it matters. I mean, opinion is your opinion, and that's fine. I can we can put whatever comment in that you'd like. I just. I don't remember. Danielle, how well, big is my, my only question would be is there a better way to do this? I mean, can we can we, you know well if I have, we I make have it a... non-conforming, why don't we just uh, you know just put a driveway in and make the other lot still have conforming frontage? Right. I don't think there's way. enough for what they wanted out of out of saving what they wanted to retain the part of the property that the town might have used for. Um, there's uh 225 foot of frontage right now yeah what's what what's the big lots area danielle i can't read it oh I can't um read, i can't read it very well oh, either. that's awful yeah it's really the hard page to eight there yeah i actually do have a better plan you know what here i'm going to stop my share of this screen and i'm going to pull up the plan that i have of this because i i should have a pdf plan let me just take a quick look Because maybe they could do something different. Yeah. Maybe they can. Like a limited frontage lot, Warren. What do you think? Yes. Yeah. So I mean, it already I, is. I'm only going to use it. All they need is a driveway to get on and off it. 50 feet. Yeah. And then, so the and then they, got a, they got 215 feet. So 15, 50 feet, they can do it. It's and they not the, 125, right. It's 100. Not, yeah, they don't have three acres. Um, I thought it was two and a half. It's 125. Thousand. That's three that's, acres. That's three acres. acres. Yeah. All right. I'm going to share my screen. Um, three builders acres, actually. It's not right, really yeah, three acres. Right. Yeah, right. It's not a real three acres. But. Um. Share. Who's got all the background noise? Must be Ryan. <laughs> I don't think so. <clears throat> do you hear what I'm talking about, Ryan? I do. I could barely hear anybody this whole talk. Okay, let me try to actually maximize a little bit. Um, there's no, there's no, no noise here. I sent the dog downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I see 139,000 square feet on lot 3B. All right, C note four. But three B, there was a reason we couldn't do it. And I swear I looked at this with Mark a lot. Um, it says 139,784 square feet. Can we not get the circle in? Is that what the problem is? No. What is that? What the, the lot would it end up being? That's one of the three. It's three A and three B. Okay, so three A is forty nine. Because you, they're looking for two two lots to be conforming, and if you have two limited frontage lots, then both of them have to be one hundred twenty thousand square feet. That's right. You can't That's just right. have one of them. Right. right. What the the so I'm looking at that page eight thing there, Danielle. Um, Where is that the whole original property on page eight that's outlined in orange or brown? 
Oh, you mean on the application? On the application. Um, hang on. I'm sorry, I don't mean to confuse things. No, it's okay. Things. I'm just trying to. I'm just toggling back and forth. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Um. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. So in the application. Page eight of the application is a. There's a map. Okay. Um. And there's an out. There's an outline in brown. Yes. Okay. So what was your question again? Sorry. Is that the entire property? in brown or is that just a piece of the property in brown and you know is that 3b and is 7 3a i think that's the whole thing and then cutting it into um at seven is not i don't think seven is part of it at all it's just okay. one parcel which has a house on it and they wanted to carve it out in sort of a horseshoe shape in order to keep some property for the town so the frontage is not really that I think it's already a limited frontage lot. Um, because that, of course, I can't read how much frontage that well, is. If, if we read if we read the notice of decision for nine mill street, map 21 parcels, it says a public hearing was held March 12th. Mm -hmm. And the board members vote to grant 110 foot variance on lot 3A and 115 foot variance on lot 3B. You put that to it's so is that what the frontage is, the 110 and 115? Or is that is that the variance that we're giving them? I don't know what they mean by giving a variance of those yeah. amounts. Like because that's not really it's not really the correct way to say it. It's either it's either 50. Say that again, Ward. The terminology is not correct. On that. Right here. Let me look at. I'm just going to look at those lots on the GIS and just. Tell I was you just going to say, it. I'll pull up GIS and look yeah. at it there. Um, so this is, let's see, nine mil. Nine mil. We don't have enough computers running here. <laughs> I think I have 100 applications running at the same time on my computer. Okay. So it now has 77 feet of frontage on Mill Street. And let me see. There's nothing on. Uh, That's all it has. Yeah. Oh, so, so they, they meant they were going to give a variance of that amount, meaning that's how much more they would have needed to get to 160. Yeah. 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 Like, that's a bad point. way to say it. And, right. So, and this that's is more than what they got. This is a legal lot. It's a, it's a, it's already, I believe this is, a, is this, already, this is already a limited frontage lot because it's only 77. Um, feet and it's and it is over three acres so you couldn't get two lots that were limited frontage from this so, well so they have to drive a road in there right. put a cul-de-sac well, in that's what they're gonna have to do they gotta subdivide it they gotta keep it they gotta subdivide it put a road in put a cul-de-sac in and sell off the back property well they don't want to put a subdivision they want to use it for future you know town no they want to use the front for a pumping station in the back, they want to, they're going to want to dispose of it, right? Well, they want to sell the house to recover the money that, you know, the town spent buying the house when they thought they were going to use it for a pumping station. Oh, the house in the front. Yeah. So they want to be able to sell that house as a lot and not have it have, you know, you know, violation on it. They want to be able to legally carve off the excess property, keep the excess property for the town for the future in case we ever need it for the water system. Or sewer, or whatever we might need it for. It's, uh, still, it's it, the backside is so isolated; it's not worth it. I don't, I don't know. They think they can use when, it. When you look at it, if you're going to carve that front house out, mm -hmm. if they gave them an acre, and then there's two and a half acres, basically almost landlocked, only on a roadway. I mean, right. they could still do it. They could still do that with a road, or with a uh, with a, uh, a a new road in a in a. You know, in, in a cul-de-sac, you weren't in but, a cul-de-sac. But the town's not going to pay, like the town's trying to get its money back because the town bought a house that it doesn't need. So now it wants to sell the house, but wants to keep some of the extra property. And keep, I, the town doesn't want to build a cul-de-sac. Like that's, I mean, they're never going to spend the money to do that. They're, they're trying to just recover the money. You know what I mean? Yeah, they can't get both things. So what they want is they, they want the ZBA, they want the ZBA to give them the variances on the frontage so the, to make those lots whole. So they can sell the one with a house on it without doing anything. That's right. 
But that's, and, that's, and that's bad. That's bad juju. It does not occur to them that they're setting a precedent. It's what it does. And it's the town setting the precedent for, right. for something. That's really bad. Yeah. Really, really bad. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want my name anywhere near it. And, we'll, and you know we're going to have to deal with it later on. Actually, I should mention this too. If the variance gets issued again, the next step would be for it to be considered by the CPC for, and it would have to come under subdivision because it doesn't qualify as an ANR because it has insufficient frontage. So what the CPC would then have to do would be to vote. And if it was passed, it would, it would vote to divide the lot, but it would also be, a, it would be a waiver from frontage because not only is a variance- I won't do that. Okay. I get a negative from me right okay. away. <laughs> okay. I, you know, there's, there's three and a half acres here. Right. They could they could go in they can go in and put a roadway in a cul-de-sac and sell two acres out the house and then a separate acre and they could still have their spot for a pumping station. Is there a way to carve off? But how do they they couldn't do it with the easements? Like they they couldn't like if they were to leave that property, if they were to carve up the property in such a way that it just leaves 50 feet so that it's still a conforming lot and it keeps it keeps it at 120,000 square feet. Is there what, I mean, for what's left, is that, I don't think we that's- We don't have area. enough square footage to do that and carve the piece of property out right. for the town. Know. No, you don't. That's what I'm saying. They could get three lots out of that, putting in, a, put in a, a regular cul-de-sac. And maybe one lot is not buildable, and that would be the that would be the um, the, the towns lot. the right. the pump station lot. And I give them a variance to put a pump station on a on a small lot because nobody's going to live there. Right. They're going to be they're going to be it's going to be a brick building that has maybe three parking well, spaces. Let me just point out another thing too here, which which would happen as we're going through the process, and Chris will know what I'm talking about here too. So we so we do that. They put the cul-de-sac and they tell send the two lots, and then there's the third lot. And who takes care of that third lot? Yeah. What do we send it down off to mow it once a week, or you know, yeah. what, what happens? It becomes an abandoned piece of property, and then the neighbors. It, it does. Right. We've had that yeah. happen, like over in Judith Drive, where they had that one lot. They just all nobody wanted to take care of it. Yep. They were all supposed to take care of it. They didn't, so we can't set up a homeowners association because the town's going to own that lot. Right. If you want to, you know, you know what I mean? The water yeah. department's going to have to get over and take care of it because they want to own yeah, it. Yeah, so you end up with a, with a maintenance problem on a piece of property. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's that's really the, that the, these are the things they don't think about. The things that we've had to deal with over the years. But I don't think they want to create free lots. Well, they, they want to create two lots. It doesn't matter whatever right. they do. Right. They create so two. There's still one. But they don't want that lot anymore. They, like, they don't want the house. Well, they been... want to get out of jail free card and they want to walk away. That's what right. they want. Right. And right. then they that's... still want to have a piece of property that they're not going to take care of unless they put something on it. And that's right. what Warren's talking about. Oh, I see. Yeah. All right. It's it's the same problem, mm -hmm. except we've we've I figured a way out that they could sell off two pieces of the two lots legally. They, which then they they recoup their costs for putting in the road, but they're not going to put in a road. I mean, right? I mean, they're not you could, if it's a, if it's a buildable acre there, they could put in. They're going to sell it for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. The can they get enough money? Be a developer, right? The board of selectmen has said that so many times I can't count. But I'll they bet you. I bet you you could sell that property off to a to a contractor. He'll do it. The whole thing. Well, yeah, two houses. If you issue, well, the biggest problem is the permitting. If yeah. We, if we were to get that, if we were to take that piece of property and, and say we sent a few grand over to a design consultant, had them just design a basic cul de sac with a couple of lots off it and, and separating the one for the town off. Yeah. Yep. Maybe, but again, they don't want, they want, they don't want to spend the money. They want to, they, yeah, they want everything. They just, but because they, but it's not that they just haven't, they haven't thought it all the way through. And they don't understand the consequences of asking the appeals to give a frontage variance. Right. Yeah, I mean, you could tell Mark that when he comes to CPC, I'm going to vote him down on this if he, if he pushes this through the ZBA. 
Okay. So he's going to get I mean, nowhere. The NBA granted it last year, but I don't know if they will grant it again. I mean, it's expired. I don't so. remember if we actually looked at it that closely last year, too. I don't remember that we reviewed it last year, actually. I don't even I, think I realized when it went to the ZBA. I knew yeah, that we were doing it, but I don't. Right. It was in March. I don't. I think we weren't meeting. I don't know. I, I don't. Yeah, we weren't meeting then. Um. Yeah. So what should I put for comment on this one? <laughs> it's, you it's, see, would not support. Yeah, we don't support. Don't I don't support it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, what was that, Warren? <laughs> <laughs> tell Mark he should withdraw this without prejudice. No, tell, no, no. You know what? That's not what you do. What you do with a situation like this is you have him come in and explain it to him. Yeah. But here's the issues. Here's the issues that we have with, please come in and sit down with us for a few minutes so we can explain it to you because, because this is, this is what you do when you do this. And, you know, we'll have to, for the, for the sake of what you want to do here, we're going to have to deal with it for a long time. <laughs> you guys longer than me probably, but anyway, it's not a good plan. Um, there has to be a better way. Yep. Well, the problem is they bought a they bought a piece of flawed property without again without looking at the big picture. Well, they didn't buy flawed property. They just bought a, a large piece of property with not enough that money. had with that didn't have enough access. So that it's grandfathered the right. way it was. But well, no, it's got it's got enough room here. It's got 120,000 square feet. It's got that's not more it. than that. Yeah, okay, and it's, yeah. And it's got 70 foot of frontage. So we'd actually right. it, it actually qualifies yeah, okay. for a living so, so, frontage yeah, lot. They they can't do what they want. They didn't understand right. what yeah, yeah. You know. You can't take a limited frontage lot and then subdivide it. Yeah, and start chopping it up. Yeah. No, but you got to put a cul-de-sac in that, and you got to As soon as we do yeah. that, we got so many of those up in McIntyre and up there, every one of the people will be on our front door wanting to split their lot up into three. Yeah, that's right. Not good. So what if I put for comments that the CPC um, would, would not recommend the issuance of the variance um, Due to creating a new non conforming lot. Can we have them come in so we can explain the whole thing? I mean, I, I have had these conversations. I mean, over probably the last couple of years, although it never came to the CPC because I didn't think they were, I didn't know how far they were moving on it. But I've right. had, I mean, we've definitely talked about, you know, issues of setting precedent, issues of, um, you know, needing to ask two boards for relief from the frontage and there's no guarantee that you get it. Um, we've talked about, um, you know, trying to get it so that we're leaving at least the house lot to be conforming, um, but that's not the property they needed. We've talked about um, trying to just carve off, I mean, because town council was initially saying, fine, carve off whatever you want from it, just leave it a, as a conforming lot. And then Mark, the other one is not a building lot, but then the question is, well, what if they want a building permit in the future to put some kind of water facility, then is it useless to them? So that's not what they, I mean, they've definitely looked at a lot of scenarios and they understand this. They just are hoping to get the relief. I mean, they understand the issues, I think. It doesn't matter, it, you know, I, I understand what they want to do Yeah. And quite clearly. The problem is what they don't understand is what kind of a legacy it leaves. Right. But we do because we fought it before. Yes, we fought it for many years to, to yeah. keep from having this problem. So, so I mean, um, I don't know. Maybe, the, maybe we need to. You know, they need to send it back to the engineers for another look at how they might do this. I mean, is there a piece of property on either side they can buy some frontage from? I mean, what, what, how? No, it's it's. It looked tight. And it's. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not available. I mean, I don't well, think they're the only way they could. I mean, then they're going to have to bite the bullet and follow what Chris says, which was they what? put a cul-de-sac in yeah. and yeah. subdivide it, get three lots or yeah. engineer it. You don't even have to put it in. You engineer the cul-de-sac. Just, just engineer it. Sell all and then things. sell the engineered plans. Yeah. It's pretty wet. Can they do that? I mean, as long as they got room. That's the engineer's look job. The stuff to, look at Charles Street Extension. I hate to bring that one up again, but look yeah. how wet that was. They got that done. Look at the two houses off a of Lowell Road that Mr. Smith built. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, he, told, so, he told the owner he couldn't build it. All right. Am I giving a comment to the ZBA or not? I mean... <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. I think you tell Mark to pull it. That's that's what I tell. I yeah, think. I would say we don't recommend. But basically, I I think the the comment we would give is we do not recommend this. Period. Okay. Yes, okay. I agree. Yeah. And we yeah, don't we, usually come out that we, strong. We recommend an alternative path for you here. Okay. Yes. And please, and if you if you'd like to hear what it is, come see us or something. You know, I don't know. Exactly. We don't think this is a good idea at all, and there's a better way that does not set precedents. You know, so let's. Yeah, because he's know. got this meeting is on Thursday one. Yeah, so tell them they should just kind of pass over this until we have a little more discussion on a better way of handling. Okay. All right, what else do we have? I think it's a good, if we can get the town to sort of be a, sort of be a little bit of a developer by getting an engineer to design a plan and selling the whole thing off, I think that'd be a step in the right direction. To get Absolutely. More. <laughs> Absolutely. We've got uh, six, uh, <clears throat> six Anglewood Lane. I looked at your can picture, I, David. Can I, I share the uh, can I share this one, Danielle? Yeah, of course. Yeah, hang on. I'll just share. He's got a good picture. He sent it to me. Very interesting, David. Uh, no, just very bizarre. There's a couple. There's a couple things with this application that I'm assuming this. So let's just start at the top. So everyone's we're all on the same page looking at it. So this is the, mm -hmm. you know, the. Uh, the actual notice here, a variance. So it's a variance from the front setback for a porch and the side setback for a garage, okay? So that's, and that's again, they didn't write that, but that's our writing, but here's the application. My first complaint, and it always drives me crazy. I don't know if it drives the ZBA crazy. Mark, Mark did it, or the one we just reviewed, but you know, they don't fill out the application for what they're trying to do. You know, it's one thing if it has to do with, uh, I want to paint my roof pink, but the whole purpose is a dimensional, you're, at, you're, you're looking for a variance on dimension here. And while LJR's drawing has some information, it provides the actual, but you need the net. What's the relief you're looking for? I think that's really important for for people to fill out the application or their civil or whatever to assist them, but because they're obviously using a civil, but I, I never get that when I've seen height variances when you don't, you're not asked, you don't put in the height you're asking for. How do you do a height variance without a height variance? Complaint number one, complaint number two is, you know, just on its face. I mean, it's you're leaving seven and a half feet roughly be, between a garage you want to add on to an existing garage um you know it just doesn't that doesn't make sense so i'm just showing you the photo so this is what's there right now 1960 uh split level with maybe at best a 412 pitch you know very very typical of for that style and this is what the plans are it, it's obviously it's not just an addition, you know, it's, it's an addition. Blow of it the, up. Yeah. It's addition of a garage. It's, they're going to rip the whole top off this thing. Uh, the fireplace right now is over on the right hand side next to the garage. They're putting that over here. And so it's a completely, you know, it's a little deceiving on, on the application. I get it. They're looking for the variance for this front porch in the side garage, but when there's already a garage, so you're not just, you know, adding a garage, you're, you're, or adding to a garage, you you know, it's, you're, you're adding kind of the second garage. So that's, that's one. And I'll go back to it. <laughs> Sorry, I get off my soapbox here, but uh, so that's that. And then the second, the third item is again, hopefully ZBA. And I would, I would ask Danielle to put this in your comments. If you are adding a garage, over on the right-hand side of the property, why would you show an elevation or not include an elevation of that side? So you're giving you're giving the board, the public, no way to look at what you're actually what that looks like from the side. You're you're showing this side over here on the left. You're, so you're you're kind of showing what the elevation is going to look like on the porch that you're trying to add, which is incorrect by the way. They don't show the they don't show the roof line in here. It actually be it would look like this. 
that architect added that in there. But anyways, the point being, they're showing the left side of the house. They're not showing the right side of the house. You can't see what this looks like in elevation. But I think the main thing is, is right here. I mean, it's just, they got all this land over here. If There's they a need septic more, system over there, Dave. Yeah, well, I but I mean, I'm just saying for if it's for if it's for you know tools, shed, whatever. I mean, he's got a lot of land over here, and I just don't think. Oh, yeah. If I was the neighbor there, I wouldn't want a, a person building a nut. So this thing's going to blow out, and they have every right to do that. I'm not. I don't have any judgment on that. You can do whatever you want, but I'm just saying, like in doing all that, you, I just don't think it's fair to the next door neighbor to add a garage seven right. feet away from the property line, and so, then you can see. Again, the photo, so, and I'll shut okay. up. Hey, Danielle. Yeah. What's the zone here? Um, it's, it's RA on Luke's it, thing, if it, you look it, at the it, application. It, if it's yeah. RA, yeah. then they're yeah. already, this whole house is in violation. Well, right? yeah, it's on 20,000, but I yeah. think it's weird, so all the lots. It's so. probably, it's probably grandfathered. We changed that, we changed yeah. that. But uh, even even at twenty thousand, the, the first garage at eighteen feet, they're all the same. Though, as you can see, though, Chris, you know all these the RA, the RB, the twenty thousand lot. They're roughly all you know pretty close to the same. Yeah, the <laughs> twenty five or twenty, right? But yeah. he has to R stay with the forty. RB is twenty, and well, they're yeah, already violating he, the side with the first garage. Yeah, I, I think he, as Luke puts in his thing, forty, twenty five, fifty. I think which is. Correct. I mean, that's that's yeah. in the application. Front side yeah. and back. Yeah, forty twenty-five. Yeah. he has it. He has it right here. So he has that correct. But it, I, you know, again, you but they, but they must, the original house is already violating it. It's right. RA. Oh wait a minute. Yeah, yeah but it's grandfathered RA. Yeah, yeah, and that's fine. You know, and because you can see all the lots in that whole neighborhood are all twenties. It looks like in that range. But but again, it's just. You know, this is the stuff like I hope ZBA does not. That's that's you talk about precedence like the last one. You start doing that. Oh, that's, yeah. a, that that's like shed distance for a, for a permanent garage. That's well, you, not if you ever had to get a piece of equipment back to work on that pool, you can't get by the garage in their lot line. Yeah. Forget yeah, about it. Know. You know, the septic system has got to be on the left of that house. Can't be over near the pool. Yeah, I'm sure you're right. And I didn't even think of that, Chris. But you're you're, you can't, you're right. You cannot get that's, you know, that's their burden. But I'm just saying, like, I don't think that's it's not. I think about the other neighbors. I'm not. Again, I don't no, want I to rain on their parade, but but I just uh, I I would not want to be a neighbor, in or a future buyer of that property next door, or whatever, because that's who we have yep. to think about the future, the now. But just putting a garage a garage right next to their property is not cool. No, it's not. The other and ones say, oh, but it's all buffered, it but it won't be when you cut down the trees to put the garage in. Yeah, and the other one's already in violation, anyways, on the side. Right, yard. the it's original, the original is in violation. So oh, you're just goodness. doubling down. <laughs> anyways, I know we're not the ZBA, so but that would be my comments: is fill out the application, show show the right side of the property because that's what you're proposing to alter, and then. Um, you know, I guess the third one would be, you know, I, I don't, I don't think personally I, I would recommend. Clear. What was that, Warren? I'm sorry, what yeah, was that? That's off close. That's seven. That. Yeah, it's close. You can't get a vehicle by there. My Bicycle. pickup truck will get barely get by there, but no, you know, a mini excavator will. But you're not going to get a dump truck by there. Nope. So well, you can't do any service on anything back there. If you had to. Yeah. Okay, so for comments, um, I, I can, should I put the notes about the application not being completely filled out with the dimensions that are requested for the relief? Well, that's, if, 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 if everyone is in agreement, right? Yeah, yeah I would, I, that's I absolutely think, true. Okay. Yeah, I just think people, if you're, if it's a variance on dimension, you should fill out. The dimension? The application, the dimension. you know? Yeah. 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 And also and, the elevation issue, if that's where the garage is, how come that part of the property isn't shown? Uh, yeah, how come we don't have a, a, a detail of that side? Right. They don't want to show it to you. And then we really think that seven feet's a little close for the garage. Yeah. Well, also, 
it just kind of makes me scratch my head if they have an architect doing this and it's a complete blowout like you can see it's all new he ha yep. that means he has an elevation of that right hand side so why did they withhold that elevation from this application like is, is it not helping their case i don't know but yeah leaving it, out, leaving it out is a weird thing i think that that's that's what you're trying to you're applying for it's just strange mm. uh, i think you hit the nail on the head david i think that's enough david i think we got them <laughs> <laughs> i beat doesn't, that doesn't before. mean they'll li they won't listen to us but we can yeah. try well i don't know you know i mean i think if we if they, i think things like this are good because it's good for david to point these out for us to make a make a point out of them because maybe it'll make them look at these applications a little closer next time yeah Right, so we don't right. tell them, listen, you didn't do your paperwork. What are you doing? So, so David, that first picture you sent me, uh, it, it looked like there was a barcode through the house. So there was something that scrambled when, yeah, when you emailed it to oh. me. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's weird. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, I just was curious at like what the house looked like because I knew it was so close to the lot line. So I'm sure you guys do the same thing. I always kind of just look on Google if I haven't had the time. Some of right, these commercials. Right ones that we we get put in front of us i like to go out and look at it like i'm sure you guys do but on the resi ones like this or zba you just pull it up and you get a little sense of what they're trying to do but mm -hmm. i was thrown back i'm like okay is this the house do i have the right address yeah yeah, yeah. yeah totally the, the, those those big pine trees right there they're gonna have to take them all down because they're gonna be in the way yeah, yeah. if you look they if look you look at the like lot in the back they look like they're in the back a little bit well, there's but... one in the front that's going to be pretty darn close to their side uh, to their driveway yeah. to their extra wide driveway it's going to be 60 feet wide now what are they it's like <laughs> the the driveway they got they could park a car in front and still get a car out of the driveway out of the garage yeah oh well all right so you got your uh you all set there danielle yeah <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> okay uh plan the administrative updates you got anything for us tonight or yep just a reminder may 24th does Everyone, or at least hopefully three of you, think that you can make May 24. Yeah, as long as I remember. Okay, I'll remind you. Um, just pull up my. Got your, you got your uh, handy dandy little pencil out, Danielle? I sure do. All right, 978 833 6162. Is that that's the cell my, phone I should be using? That's my work phone. Okay. If you're gonna if you're gonna text me, text that. Okay. Call my other one because if I have it forwarded. But if you're gonna text me, text that. All right. Okay. During the day. During okay. the day. Because I'm working like 40 hours in four and a half days now. It's like crazy. Okay. Um, then I have, let me see. Um oh, Debbie uh said to let you guys know that next week you'll need to come in for some signatures. Um on some uh, bill schedules and plans. So the 20s, the week of the 24th? Next week. Is yeah, that okay. Yeah. yeah. Is that already the 24th? Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's the, wow. it's the, it's the 19th. It's the 20th. Yeah. 24th is Monday coming. Ooh, okay. Yes, it is. All right. Um, and then let me see. I'll just, um, I, I just wanted to give a quick update on the, um, the EDC and the, and the chamber. Um, there were the, so the CPC has in it a line item for um, $20,000 every year for the EDC. And we have not had a lot of success with um, being able to find good uses to spend it. But this year, um, the EDC is partnering with the chamber. Um, the, the chamber received a grant and the CPC is, I'm um, oh, sorry, the EDC um, is using $15,000 of its or $13,000 of its money to uh, do some business promotion and shop local um, encouragement activities um, along with the chamber. So um, that's kind of exciting. There should be, you'll be seeing things around soon as far as um, there's gonna be some mailing, there's gonna be the billboard, uh, the north facing side of the billboard as you're coming from Reading into, um, sorry, the south facing side as you're coming from Reading into North Reading on 28, um, uh, by Stop and Shop over on your left. That's going to have a shop, you know, Reading and North Reading businesses, uh, you know, information on it pretty soon. So things like that, you'll you'll be seeing um, little things. Ooh. So, um, and Secretary Keneally came to visit North Reading uh, this morning um, 
uh, from uh, housing and economic development to, because of the grant that the chamber, so they came to visit the chamber really um, to say congratulations, but um, I got to go and it was very nice. So um, there were other things here. I just wanted to mention, I'll be gone the first two weeks in July. Debbie will be around, but I just wanted to bring it up. Um, I know July 4th time is a busy time anyway. Um, I don't know if we want to talk about our meeting schedule um, during those two weeks or as the time gets nearer, um, but I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that I'd be gone during that time. That's okay. Yeah, I'm going to be I'm going to be out of town the 12th through the uh, 16th also. Okay. That's the second right week. Now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the first couple of weeks of July, I'm going to be real busy too. So. Okay. Yeah, you're shooting fireworks. You, you got you got you got some shows lined up, Warren. Oh, I'm telling you. While, Good while, for you. While we were, while we were sitting here awesome. this meeting, I got uh, I got the text from uh, Rockport saying that they got their final approval, so their show's going. So. Good. That's Good. Awesome. Good. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Well, great news, Warren. Yeah, we, and actually, the, there must be trouble with some of the other companies because we're getting requests for shows from people we've never dealt with before. Oh. And um, we're we're I dance my dance card is full. <laughs> you got enough. You got enough uh, material to shoot the shows. Oh yes. yes. <laughs> oh, you didn't use any last year, did you? Yeah. Well, I, not only that, but I but I anticipated a problem with China, and so I had bought extra and and put it away to make sure that when they had a problem, and then that wasn't the problem that happened at all. Yeah. Instead, the pandemic came, but then my regular order showed up too. But I had used it, so I'm stuffed. Oh. Well, luckily you have a bunker to put it in. Oh yeah, <laughs> we, have enough, we have enough. We actually had to build. We actually had to outfit another container in order to put everything away because we got rows of containers and we we were still short, so we had to outfit another one, get it inspected by the ATF and all that, and then we filled uh, that one up. So, so. Oh, good for you. Down. That's good. We had a lot of shows. That's great. Good news. Yeah. yeah. You're back. Yeah. <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> firecracker, firecracker, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Hope I can survive it this year, you know. <laughs> uh, you will. You will. Yeah, I've been very careful about scheduling too, so we should be good. Just remember, take care of yourself when you're out there in the public. No worry. That's all I have. Uh, okay. Good. All right, Kate. Okay, everybody. Thank you very much for coming tonight. It's as usual. We were, uh, hey, we didn't do too bad tonight. We yeah, we did pretty good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. June first. Uh, move this right along. June first. Uh, we'll we'll see if we actually come in or if we can. Uh, the Go into the office. Uh, kind of convenient, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm waiting for guidance on how schedule public hearings and meeting yep. space and all that. So I'll let you know as soon as I hear anything. The town hall okay. is open um, five days a week, but no, for, you know, yeah, limited Monday, hours. Friday, a day open from till 11, 30, 8.30 to 11.30. And then Tuesday and and Thursday, they're open <coughs> 3.30 or something like that. 1.30 to 3.30, yeah. 1 30, so, yeah 1 30 and I'm, I'm mostly in during those times um, now. Yeah. Debbie's yeah. in every day, as you know. <laughs> it, it, it would be good to if once we get back to real meetings if we can still get uh uh norcam to to put our meetings out there yeah yeah oh, this that would be really great. nice having them yeah having, having them there having, having the little get involved yeah. thing there yeah. sitting up and you know no no people more, can we've had a lot more input and a lot more yeah. involvement of people because of them so i think it's yeah good. yeah it really it really it's really good to get yeah. that input from the from the community yeah. Yeah. Thank so you, and Bill. they and they're helping us out. He can't hear us. He's probably not sitting there, no. which is yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to say thank you next time. Yep, that's okay. He recorded my thank you. That's all. Yes, right. he did. He'll <laughs> he'll hear it because he'll he'll uh, he'll see it later. Yeah. I'm sure. All right. Okay. So. Thanks a lot, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good, right. night. Good night. Good night.